So today I'm going to be talking about Wizards of Waverly Place yet again because you already know how much I love this show. Now this show is full of interesting characters, but one character that nobody ever seems to talk about is Stevie Nichols. Now Stevie is a rebellious girl who transferred to Tribeca Prep in the season 3 episode, Detention Election. And because Stevie and Alex have fairly similar personalities, the two quickly befriended each other. As they spend more and more time together, Alex soon finds out that Stevie is also a wizard, which only strengthens the bond between the two. Alex and Stevie even become so close that it causes Harper to feel like a third wheel around them, as shown in the season 3 episode, Third Wheel. Wow, these Wizards of Waverly Place episode titles are really straight to the point. Anyways, in the next episode, The Good, The Bad, and The Alex, Alex sees that Stevie's upset when they mention her brother Warren, who Stevie had a falling out with. Alex then decides to go to the wizard world in an effort to find Warren and reunite him with his sister. However, Alex finds out from Warren that Stevie ditched him right after he beat her in the wizard competition. So Warren is stuck there until Stevie returns. Now if you don't know what the wizard competition is, it's a competition that all wizard siblings must compete in and the winner gets crowned the family wizard and they get to obtain full wizard powers while the other siblings lose all of their powers and become regular humans. Now since Stevie lost in the wizard competition, she was supposed to give up her powers but when Alex, Justin, and Harper go to confront her, she states that she doesn't want to give up her powers because it's not fair that only one sibling gets to keep their powers. Now the question I wanted to bring up is, was Stevie right? Should all wizards be allowed to keep their powers? Is a wizard competition unnecessary? The answer to all of these questions is no. The wizard competition is designed in such a way that only the brightest, most resourceful, and responsible young wizards get to keep their powers. This eliminates any bad seeds, in this case Stevie, from obtaining the immense power that comes with being the family wizard. The only flaw I find with the wizard competition is when there's a young wizard who's an only child, but is too reckless with magic to become the family wizard. For example, TJ Taylor, who's a recurring character in the first two seasons of the show. But maybe the wizard council has a rule that prevents people like TJ from becoming the family wizard. Now you may be bringing up the fact that Alex is just as reckless with magic as TJ and Stevie, so how come she got to become the family wizard, but not them? Well, because Alex is the main character of the show, we actually got to see her grow into a more responsible wizard that's deserving of becoming the family wizard. However, because TJ and Stevie are minor characters, we didn't really get to witness much character growth from them. In conclusion, the writers really put a lot of thought into making this incredible show. And I don't need to tell you guys how much I love this show, because you already know. Now, before I wrap things up, I just wanted to ask a few questions pertaining to the whole wizard competition thing. So, is the wizard competition different every single time you take it? Because when the Russos took it in Wizards of Waverly Place the movie, the wizard competition was like a full-on battle using the elements. But in the series finale, the wizard competition was more of a game show. So because we saw the Russos taking it twice, and the first time was different from the last time, I'm assuming that the wizard competition is a different thing every time someone takes it. Like it's a snowflake, like no two wizard competitions are alike. You know what I mean? Also, this question is not about the wizard competition, it's just about wizard powers in general in this show. So we all know that Jerry Russo gave up his powers in order to marry Teresa, who is a regular human being. Now, assuming that the two got married before they had kids, how do the Russo kids have powers? Because theoretically, they shouldn't have any powers because their dad gave up his powers long before he even had kids. Now, I don't know if that's a plot hole or if I'm just missing something. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.